Uh, hey everyone, we are so excited to be filming this after having such a lovely time in the beautiful city of Amsterdam. Um, really thanks to API The Docs for having us, it was a really great time. Um, but today we're gonna talk about dopamine, which by definition is a neurotransmitter that allows you to feel satisfaction, motivation, reward. Um, and wait a minute, this isn't a microbiology class. This is, uh, I thought we were talking about developers here and documentation. But I actually love using the word dopamine in the developer context because although it sounds a bit weird together, um, they actually mean something really powerful. Um, and it's something that we've all experienced before as developers, right? It's that time where you feel that first big piece of success. Think back to a time when you're learning about a new tech, you're just dipping your toes in for the first time, you haven't even rolled up your sleeves, but you're just poking around. And suddenly you get that first moment of success and pride. That feeling when you truly see that the product that you're using, the product that you're playing around with is actually really cool. It's that instant dopamine that hits uh, when you see that success state. And we all want that for our developers on our platforms, right? Um, so today we're gonna chat a little bit about how you can expect that same dopamine hit for every user that comes to your product um, by building some really nifty documentation. And we're going to not only tell you tell you what it is, but we're also going to show you what we mean by doing a really cool demo that we have prepared for you. So next slide. Accelerating time to first dopamine through developer documentation, interactive developer documentation. Um, so I'm Nevi. This is my great friend and colleague, Greg Brimble. Um, we work at Cloudflare helping to build out the developer platform, specifically on a product called Cloudflare Pages, which is a platform for developers to ship full stack applications to the Cloudflare network. Um, we talk to developers every day in person, on Discord, on Twitter, um, and we're constantly thinking about the way our users onboard onto our products and what makes a truly delightful experience um, and what doesn't. So we're always asking ourselves things like, well, why did it take them so long to sign up to set, to sign up in the first place? Or why did it take them so long to have their first deploy? Or even what stopped them from actually deploying? Um, and so we have this theory on our team that this metric, this next metric, oh, Cloudflare Pages is our product. This metric, the time to first dopamine is the golden metric, right? Um, one that's especially important if you are in early product, early in the product life cycle, um, and discoverability means everything to you and your team. Um, this metric really pushes the challenge of how do you get developers to onboard and hit dopamine as fast as possible? How do you show all that your platform has to offer to a new user without overwhelming the user and shepherding them to su the success state? Um, but for developer products, as we know, documentation is a crucial um, component to discoverability and a learning tool when evaluating options, right? As a developer, if I'm researching and evaluating a bunch of different products, um, I want to, of course, look at documentation to see what this product can do and if it's worth the investment of my time and my money and my company's time and resources, right? So I read documentation to prepare for that. Um, so aside from, I guess, increasing or decreasing time to first dopamine, um, having that time to first dopamine also um, or having really great developer documentation really builds that foundation of trust by the user. And for some, it's the first impression. It's if the user loves it, really, really great instant dopamine. But if the user hates it and gets lost, it's a missed opportunity and kind of a make or break situation. So we know develop, the developer documentation plays a really big role in the dopamine uh, in plays a really big role in time to first dopamine. But the question remains, how do we actually create good documentation that minimizes time to first dopamine? And the answer is, oops, build the oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is we have to go through talking about some of the previous and older types of documentation. So let's start off by doing that. The first type you have is static documentation. And there's limitations around static documentation, right? You're limited to what you can show, um, unless you're an absolute genius in describing what a product does and the DX that goes along with it, um, right? But it's your average run of the mill documentation, just text on the screen, user reads it, user tries to understand what the documentation means. Um, Greg is going to give us a quick demo and example of what we mean when we say static documentation. Thank you, Nevi. So, um... Yeah, static documentation, like Nevi said, is maybe something that's pretty standard. Um, you maybe have just like a simple HTML web page that's got like a list of um, all of the different 
endpoints and interactions you can do with your, your product. Maybe a bit of information about how to get started, like authentication information or rate limits or whatever. Um, but then you just sort of go into detail about this is this endpoint, here's how you hit it, you put in your API token, and this is the type of response you get back. And then again, for here's how you create a to do item, or here's how you do uh, how you get a to do item. And you see this gets very samey very quickly. Um, and ultimately, it's a static document. It's just detailing out um, what these endpoints are, but there's nothing really that grabs a user that inspires them about how to use your product or how to actually get started building a real integration. So let's take it up one notch, right? We're not set, we're not doing static documentation anymore. We're doing contextual documentation. And so contextual doc documentation provides a more personalized experience. Maybe it puts your account ID in the documentation. Maybe it puts, um, I don't know, what's another example? Uh, it could pull in anything from, from your account. So um, we have an example here. So maybe this time you're logged in when you're um, viewing this. And it's the same sort of idea. You still detail out the same endpoints and things. Um, but now, rather than just having this sort of static placeholder that we had in static, we're actually pulling in their API token here from their account. And perhaps um, the examples that we show are now able to be um, run by a user. They could take this, they could copy it, and it's directly applying. They've got their account ID in here and their API token ready to go. So um, this is definitely an improvement on static because it's... Um, personalized to the user so they get the context as to like what's in their account and things. Um, but again, it's maybe pretty sort of samey. The document just goes on and on. Um, and it's ultimately up to the user to actually execute these requests. So we're still removing a small layer of friction, right? To actually go and look for all this information that you might need. Um, but I think we can go even further. So let's provide um, interactive documentation. So taking it up two notches, uh, you have interact interactive, oh my gosh, interactive documentation, um, which is letting the user maybe click on a couple of buttons, maybe trigger an animation, um, maybe interacting with some APIs. Um, so a little, a little more interactive and a little more helpful for users. But Greg, why don't you give us a, a little demo on what that looks like? Yep. So where static was just simple and everyone saw the same. Contextual pulled in their account information. Like Nevi says, interactive documentation goes a step further. And now not only are you personalizing the docs that people are seeing for their own account information, but perhaps we could also let them actually send off a request from within the documentation and pull it back the information that they have in their account. So this is um, meaning that they don't need to read the documentation and then like copy this request and then go over to the terminal to execute this or whatever. They're able to do it right within the same documentation. And this is pretty much the sort of um, best that we see really in, in the real world at the moment. Um, a lot of great developer portals will have interactive documentation like this. And so the last one we have is deployable app, uh, deployable documentation. Um, so what if you could show your users what you meant when you said your product is really cool, right? An experience is worth a thousand words or probably even more than a thousand words. Um, so what if you could get your users from discovery to deployed application right from the documentation? And all they have to do is follow steps, click some buttons, um, and boom, see the power of your product. So um, Nevi's introduced this idea of deployable documentation. And this is sort of just a concept that we've come up with. Um, and we've sort of built this little demo to show how this might look. Um, but ultimately, you could build this into your apps, however makes most sense for whatever products you're building. And like we say, this is just a sort of idea to see um, how this might work. So building on the examples we were using in the um, uh, earlier documentation examples. And um, we've built out this sort of to-do app um, here, which has got a classic sort of standing uh, static landing page. We can log in and we um, are immediately greeted with this uh, sort of getting started um, hints inside the product. So this is a pattern we're already pretty familiar with in products. It might be that when you sign up for a to-do app service, you get these pre-made to-do items to just sort of encourage you to navigate around using the product to get familiar with how the product works. And these are sort of hints about um, just how you can immediately get started with the experience. And so the idea of this, this talk is generally about how can we do the same for documentation. So 
just to show you, show sort of show you how these sorts of things work. And we might just like check off this item. We could create a new item, like buy milk, and pop it in the groceries list. Um, and then there's maybe other ones that show other parts of the, the product. Uh, but the one we're interested in today is how we're building an integration with the developer API. So up at the top here, we've got this developer section of our product. And of course, it, depending on how you're building your product and what exactly it is, maybe um, you, this is very obvious in your product if it's a developer-focused thing. But it might also just be tangential, like our to-do app. It might not be that all of your customers are developers. So this is just something you could integrate into your product wherever it makes sense. And you see here, this might be slightly different to what you would maybe expect in uh, other sort of developer um, pages on, on applications. Rather than dropping you straight into reference documentation, we offer these sorts of learning tracks, we're sort of calling them. They are um, use case based guides for how you could actually build something of value with the developer API. So we're going to follow this first one here. And we want to post our to-do items to a Google chat room. And so I might be personally using this to-do app, but I want to share um, all the to-dos that I'm uh, executing on with the rest of my team. So if we click into here, this is the sort of experience we've um, been playing around with. On the left, we have this guide that we're going to follow. And on the right, we have an integrated IDE within our product that lets us build out our integration all in one place whilst we're following our documentation. So this is obviously pretty new. Um, it means that um, users don't need to uh, read documentation and then figure out how to build and actually host an integration. It means they can all do it in, in a single place. So um, we've already got a Google Chat space set up here. So this might be my, my team, and I want to share my to-dos with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a webhook. I've prepared one already. If we go into it's up here, actually, apps and integrations, we grab this um, webhook uh, URL. All of this is talked through in these um, guides so people can follow it in, in real time. And we want to create this, um, uh, this uh, action for when a new to-do item is created in our product. We want to post that to Google Chat. So I'm just going to um, paste in that for a second and this snippet. So you'll see we are setting up this event listener to say, hey, when an item is being created, we want to take some action. And in this case, we want to post it to our Google chat room. And we're going to just say, hey, there's been this new to-do item with that um, particular title. So now if we go back over to our to-do item, if we create a new one, let's say buy bananas, groceries, we hit save, all oh, fingers crossed, we have our integration automatically posting to Google Chat. This is very, very cool. Um, we're going to take it a little bit further. So um, this is sort of an extension on this learning track. Obviously, at this point, users could be doing anything that they want, the developers, they could um, be uh, this is just an example to posting to Google Chat, but it could be doing absolutely anything. You could post to Discord, you could be um, integrating with other third-party services, whatever they want. Um, we're going to, like I say, extend this to now also capture when we make updates to our to-do items, i.e. when we complete one. So I'm just going to grab this URL again here, and I'm going to pop it. Here. So now, when a to do item is being completed, we should see this um, get updated in chat. So we go back here and we say uh, buy newspaper, groceries. Not really a grocery, but you get the idea. <laughs> We hit save, we get buy newspaper, great. And then if I check this off, 
this gets updated with the it has been completed. Awesome. Right. One last thing. We maybe don't necessarily want to post all of our to-dos to this team chat. Maybe we want to only post to-dos that have been tagged with the um, work project. But Greg, we really care about your milk. Yeah, well, I don't think the team are particularly <laughs> good about personal items. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, change the um, code we've got so slightly. We're going to add in this filter here. So we're going to check to make sure that the to-do item has been tagged with work before we actually post it in um, our chat. And then similarly, we're only going to do that for items uh, when they're completed, if they have the work tag. And save that. Now we go back to our app. I should be able to create a uh, buy apples, groceries, and hopefully that hasn't appeared which it hasn't. And if I create one with uh, attend stand up, tag that as work. Well, hey, we've got that being posted to um, our team channel. So this is just an example of how um, you might build this sort of deployable um, developer portal experience inside a product. Um, but let's go back to our talk to chat about it a bit more. So um, very briefly, just to sort of how we built this ex example, um, we have a few things going on. Um, Workers for Platforms is the core piece that's um, powering this experience. We are, every time a user is making a change to this, um, in this integrated development environment, the IDE, um, we are deploying this to workers for platforms and that is how we're getting this sort of dynamic um, integration that users can provide the ide itself is visual studio code we've just built it for the web so it's available within the web browser and this is offering us a familiar experience that many developers are um, using every day anyway so it's a comfortable environment for them to write these um, scripts in and of course we're deploying this whole application with pages. Nevi and I are pretty biased, but we think it's a pretty great place to um, build full stack web applications. And yes, we didn't come here to talk about Cloudflare. We came here to talk about how you can create interactive documentation um, and deployable documentation. But we do think it's a pretty cool stack to build on top of. And I wanna give you a couple of reasons why. Our network spans across 285 plus cities. So imagine, Anywhere your users are, that's where your site can be. And that also means by being in 285 plus cities, you're less than 50 milliseconds away from 95% of the internet connected, uh, of users connected to the internet. That's right, right? Did I get yep. it? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, we can handle really great load, 63 million requests per second at peak. Um, and it's also $0 to get started, right? So if you wanted to go and prototype this for your company, for your product, Try it out, get started, let us know what you think um, at no cost to you whatsoever. And just um, very briefly, I think since we gave this presentation in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago, that's actually gone up to 300 plus. So we are just building out this network at a ridiculous rate. So um, the key sort of takeaways we want you to have from this talk um, is mostly just about trying to obviously meet developers where they are, give them a great experience when they get started with your product. Ultimately, that is how you um, build this short time to first dopamine and really get them to stick um, in loving your, your product. So um, we have sort of four ideas on how you might want to do this. Um, you could copy some of these ideas of having learning tracks in your developer documentation. These are use case based examples rather than just static reference on here are all my endpoints. You can actually show a developer how they build a real life integration and that can go a long way into just getting their mind spinning about what it is possible with your product. Um, in order to offer a slick experience, you can automatically generate libraries or packages from your API and this will let developers um, easily integrate with your product um, from within the languages like JavaScript or Rust or whatever it is um, that they're already familiar with and building their, their services in. And finally, if you want to go, uh, sorry, not finally, uh, um, penultimately, if you want to go the uh, sort of uh, whole way with us in this example that we just showed you, um, you can explore Cloudflare for 
Cloudflare Workers for Platforms as a um, way to allow you to get uh, allow you to let developers deploy directly from within your product. It's a really slick experience um, and one that is uh, quite uncommon. So it gives you a really cool edge um, uh, over your competitors. And actually, finally, the real finally, um, if there's one thing we want you to take away from this presentation, it's to track your users' time to burst dopamine, right? Um, track, tracking this metric with developer documentation like this actually gives you a better idea of what the conversion rate could be. If someone's going through the documentation, they're deploying along the way, you can actually see the minute, the second that you get them looped into your product and the, when you've actually caught them. So I think that this is a super important metric to track alongside with, you know, adoption and um, revenue and all other metrics that we track anyways. I think if you're a new product in the market and you are really looking to um, harp on the discoverability aspect of your product, time diverse dopamine is an incredible metric to track. And I think one of the questions that we got in the audience the other day is, well, how do you figure out um, what your time diverse dopamine moment is? Um, for us, it's the time that a user deploys for the first time, but it's really situational and depends on the product and the industry. Um, but think about it, talk about it with your teams. It di dif differs amongst all products, but a really, really great metric to track. Um, and so we just wanna thank you all so much for listening to this presentation. Um, definitely reach out to us if you ever have any questions. Um, we're on Twitter as well as Discord. Um, so definitely feel free to reach out and thanks so much for your time. Thanks.